Last week, several whistleblowers came forward to testify to the Environmental Protection Agency's investigation and potential manipulation of data collection regarding chemical contamination in East Palestine, Ohio, following the 2023 derailment. Scott Smith has previously revealed dangerous levels of dioxins and ferns in the town's air, water, soil, and homes, which counters the EPA narrative that it is, in fact, safe to live in East Palestine. That's what they say. While EPA staffers have tried to discredit Smith, a new filing from Stephen Petty substantiates Smith's findings. Petty argues that the claim of no long-term health impacts is premature and speculative due to the lack of human health assessment studies that have been conducted in East Palestine. And in other East Palestine news, settlement checks related to the disastrous derailment could now be delayed up to two years because of an appeal of a, a federal judge's decision to approve the $600 million deal. Many in East Palestine, uh, res many East Palestine residents are understandably outraged by the news. Some had planned to use the money to relocate from the community that had hazardous chemicals spread throughout it. The plaintiff's attorneys had hoped to start sending the checks out by the end of the year, but now the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals will first have to wrestle with whether the deals offer enough compensation. The plaintiff's attorney said, quote, we will do everything in our power to quickly resolve this appeal and prevent any further burdens on the residents and local businesses that want to move forward and rebuild their lives. Residents posting on a Facebook group accused the pastor, Reverend Joseph Sheely, who filed the appeal of being greedy. Joining us now to discuss it all is Government Accountability Project whistleblower Scott Smith. Hey, Scott, thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So uh, this is wild that uh, the checks could be delayed up to two years because of a challenge. Meanwhile, residents are still living in what is likely uh, very unhealthy circumstances in the community of East Palestine and putting themselves at risk. So in Yeah, well, the... Yeah, I'm not a lawyer, and uh, I'm not so sure what's true and not true on social media, um, so I can't speak to that. But I've been very clear from day one. I've been there 27 times, 31 trips over the last year and a half, comprehensive testing, that it's not my position or anybody I'm working with to recommend opting in, opting out. I'm for transparency. I'm for residents to have full information. And uh, what has happened, as you can see in the latest press release from Government Accountability Project, the EPA, Norfolk Southern, and now joined by the plaintiff's attorneys, um, have orchestrated quite a smear campaign. And the, in the, it, at a very high level, the bottom line is, if there's nothing to see here, why were the plaintiff's attorneys withholding Stephen Petty's results? It just doesn't make any sense. So transparency and information from the plaintiff's attorneys in the court, in my opinion, could clear this all up. What are they hiding is the question. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the government's position. So the EPA says it's perfectly safe. You can drink the water. It's fine. There's no evidence to the contrary. What, why is that not something that should be accepted at face value? Uh, great question, and we have evidence that is voluminous that, that the EPA is a completely corporate captured agency, and the EPA has been used as a front for Norfolk Southern um, and the, what I call the incestuous revolving door of, like, for example, the plaintiff's attorney, uh, the Norfolk Southern attorney used to be an, a Davina Pujara, ex-EPA attorney, that tried to intimidate me and subpoena in my driveway. The, what you will see in my recent sworn declaration, along with Stephen Petty's and my 629 pages of exhibits, the EPA is manipulating and altering data, removing data that they have in their possession that is Norfolk Southern to promote a narrative of nothing to see here. It, and, and I have an expression, you can't find what you don't look for. And I plan to go out there twice, and it, it, it came it became, you know, 27 trips and 31 rounds of testing because the EPA and Norfolk Southern refused to test near ground zero. And I want to just uh, add for context, 52% of my results say nothing to see here. About 48% have identified hot zones. In hot zones where you have elevated levels uh, above um, industry-accepted screening levels, uh, for follow-up, and, and the EPA has refused to test in these same locations. That's why the community reached out to me. I mean, it just it doesn't take a genius to realize that there are most likely some sort of health uh, risks living in the community after this, this horrible event occurred. When you say that the EPA has been tethered to corporate interests, including North 
folks. Southern, can you explain a little bit more about that relationship and how you were able to conclude that? Yeah, um, because it comes from um, a lot of evidence where the EPA will publicly tell the public and the media that uh, uh, that they are overseeing Norfolk Southern. But we've uncovered through Freedom of Information Act request where it's clear that Norfolk Southern is saying, you know, the EPA is saying they will not communicate with any contractors. They will go through Norfolk Southern on everything. And we also have recently, uh, and this is in my sworn declaration, the EPA withholding Norfolk Southern data because they say they can't release Norfolk Southern data. So that is completely counter to the EPA telling the public they are in charge uh, and they're a transparent organization and they're, and they're basically managing Norfolk Southern. In their own words, they're caught. You said they tried to intimidate you because of your outspokenness and trying to shed a light on this. What exactly have they done to try to get you to be to, to shut up about what's going on in East Palestine? Yeah, uh, there's a whole network of ex EPA uh, employees, attorneys that have sold out their fellow Americans, and specifically in my driveway in Massachusetts, I received a subpoena from Norfolk Southern from ex-EPA attorney Duvina Pajara, who sold out and now works for the Norfolk Southern attorneys, they wanted all my communications with media, all my private communications with residents about testing, all my detailed backup, and a complete violation of my constitutional rights. That's why I have Government Accountability Project. And, and, th and this is all documented, clearly laid out. So we now live in an age where the corporate interests control the federal agency, and anybody that doesn't toe the line in the narrative you attempt to intimidate them and silence them. And, and, and the recent thing is the plaintiff's attorneys were talking just like me as late as January 26, 2024. Then all of a sudden a settlement gets announced and they changed their narrative. They actually hired a PR firm, as you can see in the government accountability press release, the plaintiff's attorneys joined the EPA. They hired a PR firm to smear and attack me. And what they didn't see coming is their own expert, Stephen Petty, come forward with a sworn declaration vindicating me, saying that my methods are sound. So what did Stephen Petty say to validate uh, what, what, you've, what you've uncovered? And, um, and, and if you can, go a little bit more into depth about what you did uncover over the years and the several uh, times that you've visited yeah. East Palestine. I what, what basically, I'd refer you to the sworn declaration. I don't have it memorized, obviously, off the top of my head, but that my methods are valid, uh, the way I do testing. And I'm also using Eurofin's independent lab, the same lab used by Norfolk Southern, the same lab used by EPA. And the fact is, um, the EPA refused to sit down with me and share detailed test results and reciprocity. Because I was all for, even though I'm a private citizen, I was willing to do that. Now that these other documents have come out, we know why the EPA only wanted a one-way direction from a private citizen, because they were withholding information and deceptively manipulating data. Mm. Incredible. Scott Smith, thank you so much for joining us to shed light on this subject. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me.